you know, if nothing else, if you watched our shows, the uh, Kentucky Derby by the Thoroughgraph Numbers and Patterns, the Kentucky Oaks by the Thoroughgraph Numbers and Patterns, and the Preakness by the Thoroughgraph Numbers and Patterns, then you know um, we've, we've clearly demonstrated that Thoroughgraph is a very valuable tool if read properly, if you know how to interpret the patterns and, and, and identify um, what's important and what's not. Um, Cause it's in there, uh, the patterns don't lie, the numbers don't lie. It's just a question of reading them. We came up with Mage as a horse that was gonna make a forward move. Uh, we came up with Pretty Mischievous as a, you know, another great patent horse who was going to make a forward move. And we loved National Tre Treasure as the horse to beat in the Preakness. And he went out and won the race. Uh, so with all that, uh, we are going to do the Belmont Stakes by the Thoroughgraph Numbers and Patterns. We're also going to have a, another special show with a guest from Thoroughgraph where we're going to talk about the bounce coming soon. Uh, another show that's coming up, just so you know, we're going to do a show on, on value and, and, and how I identify, define, and, and ultimately find value in betting horses. But before that, uh, we're going to recap a little. We're going to talk about some significant Preakness takeaways, and there are some that I think we can benefit from going forward. Uh, information in not, and knowledge is power. Uh, we're going to hear a little bit about a little bit from Bob Baffert, uh, courtesy of Maryland, Maryland Jockey Club. But uh, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the, the Havana meltdown situation as, as well. But uh, that's not a last but least, but we're going to cover that last because, I don't know, I may even get emotional and I don't want to do that at the beginning of the show. I'd rather save that for the end of the show. So we'll get to all that in a minute. Thank you for visiting Pass the Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PassTheWire.com. Baffert ain't sending him there, Jimmy Barnes there, or Bob's going himself. None of them are going for crab, crab, crab cakes. Uh, we know that. If they're going, they're going because they think they got a shot. This horse has a two point. Bad, and, uh, and, you know, people don't, when we, we lose a horse, it's, it's just. It's tough on everybody. We we grieve, and um, but then for this horse to come back and pull us out of that dark uh, area that we were in is just amazing. That's so why I love horse racing. I love those horses. They try so hard. He it looked like he wouldn't let that horse pass him. He fought. He dug in, and Jim and uh, Vic, um, Johnny said he he didn't want to pull up. He he just kept on going, and uh, but it just. You know, this game, there's a lot of twists and turns, but um, you just got to, you know, get through it. And I have a great team. My All my assistants, they work so hard. The grooms, they work. The care for these horses is unbelievable. And so, um, and this is how we're rewarded. You know, watch a great race. The fans got a great race. Unfortunately, you know, we'd, we'd like to see the Derby winner win because it helps, you know, going to Triple Crown. I've been there. I've been there for those disappointments, but... Uh, you know, they they did a great job. I got to get to know them and stuff, but um, it was uh, it was a great finish for me. Very emotional, but a great finish. I was going to say, you sound emotional. How were you feeling? Very. I, I, you know what? I I really couldn't get into the race until um, when he hit the wire. I think that's when I started enjoying the race. I just couldn't. The, the rest of the, my day was not. We just couldn't enjoy the day. And um, But once, once, you know, we got around there and he hit the wire, it just, you know, just brought us back and just makes us, you know, they, you have to earn these races, you know, they just, they're so hard to win and um, to get another one and for Johnny to get his first, I was thinking more about Johnny, you know, he's, the Preakness got away from him with Authentic and he got it today and Javier got his derby and, and Churchill, so they're all good buddies, we all get together and talk about it, so now we're all in the, we're all in the same club. You know what? It just means that, you know, I've sometimes I'm like I feel like Nick Saban. I like those five star recruits, and that's what that's the whole that's the whole uh, that's my whole secret. You got it. What did you think when you saw those fractions going up? I I really like I loved I loved them because you know Johnny says if we could make an easy lead, 
and uh, just cruise around there because you know the last time he won he was on the lead and, and he had he couldn't make the lead in California just really fast horses and uh, and so but you know today you know the going the, we knew he would love the distance you know and um, and so once he at the, when I saw the half mile fraction there was no excuses that horse came to him and I knew uh, I was talking to Chad Brown earlier he, he told me that horse was going to be tough you know and he's always tough to beat. And I thought he was going to go by us, but our horse dug in. It was a great race. So, you know, we were all, – all I'm asking at any time I run a horse is if I have a chance to cheer when they turn for home. So it was exciting. Were you cheering, though? I, I was cheering like, you know, I, please make this happen for Johnny. You know, I, I was thinking of Johnny. So. Playing a little spoiler, I asked you about that yesterday. Now you've done it. How do you feel? Well – you know, I'm not, I don't go in as a spoiler. I've met the connections. They're nice people. I know what they've been through. And he was telling me he's been here twice. He's had horrible luck the twi two times he's been here. And I, and I remember him. And so uh, this game, it, it's it's a lot of twists and turns, and you just have to deal with them. It's a roller coaster. And I just happened to be on, on, the, on the top end today. And, you know, we're in, we went from good to bad. And uh, But at the end of the day, um, I'm just proud of the horse. And, you know, we just love this horse. We were always very high on him, but he just wouldn't put it together. But the older he gets, he's getting better. And the distance is, I think, is his friend. Bobby looks great today. I'm a pretty good judge of, 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 of people, character, played a lot of poker growing up, uh, dealt, dealt, dealt poker in some of the clubs in Brooklyn when I was a kid, well, teenager really. Uh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we saw um, what they refer to as crocodile tears. Uh, I don't buy that for a second, but we're gonna get to all that. Uh, let's talk about uh, the significant Preakness takeaways, uh, in my opinion, anyway, and, 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 and there are some. Uh, first thing I'll say is a lot of people knocked the race, only had, you know, the Derby win a run back out of the Derby. Um, other than that, it was a small field of, of, of new shooters. But I don't really judge a race based on that. Turning for home, you had National Treasure on the lead with Johnny Velasquez, who had never won a Preakness. You had, uh, and riding for Bob Baffert, who had a two-year hiatus from the Triple Crown races. Here he is on the lead, turning for home in the Preakness. Uh, Johnny V never win the race. Uh, Irad Ortiz comes up outside him on blazing sevens, uh, early move, aggressive move, riding for Chad Brown, who, we'll start with this, accomplished a phenomenal training feat. With cloud computing, he passed on the Derby, could have ran, ran into Preakness, best interest of the horse came first, won the Preakness, and they call him a dirt trainer. Uh, early voting last year, who I love, could have run into Derby, thought it better for the horse, horse came first to skip the Derby, run into Preakness, won it. This year, same thing. Could have run blazing sevens in the Derby. Didn't, thought it was best for the horse to run in the Preakness. Almost won. Uh, putting the horse first is paramount. Chad did a phenomenal job with those three horses. And I'll throw this out there. Zandon showed up for the Derby last year and ran his peak best race. He just wasn't good enough to beat Epicenter and Rich Strike under those circumstances. I think if they run him against Rich Strike a, a hundred times, he wins 99 of them. But, you know, that day was Rich Strike's day, but Zandon showed up. Uh, uh, Blazing Seven showed up with, with, a, with a huge effort. Couldn't get past National Treasure, who also showed up with a career effort. We talked about on the show him sitting on a career effort, and he brought it. Uh, you know, definitely went past that two that we referenced in his two-year-old season. Slow fractions, I get it. Uh, but the argument that 
Blazing Sevens might have gone past him under different circumstances is completely 100% subjective. We don't know that. We'll never know that. I apologize. My dogs are acting up. Um, we'll never know that. Uh, we can assume whatever we want to assume, okay? But the bottom line is this. National Treasure was dead game, okay? Blazing Sevens got a nose in front. National Treasure engaged, came back, uh, got his neck and nose back out in front and just said, no, you're not getting by me. And when a racehorse gets competitive and digs in like that, um, it's not about the fractions. It's not about uh, the ground loss. It's not about any of that. At, that. at that point, it's a fight. It's about the heart. It's about what's in here and what they can do and how they can fight and, and, and gut it out. And make no mistake, we saw from the top of the stretch to the wire a great fight, a great stretch run, two horses on their A game, leading three-year-olds in the, in, 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 you know, for this year. Uh, and it was a, it was a phenomenal race uh, from that point of view. Yeah, I'm a little biased. I bet on the winner. But that aside, had Blazing Sevens got up, Chad Brown is my friend, Bob Baffert's my friend. I'd have been happy for either one who won. I don't bet based on, on that. And you, most of you know that. I based bet you know, I bet based on who I think is going to win the race. Um, and I thought it was national treasure and, 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 and it was now, uh, mage mage showed up big time. Okay. Mage didn't get the best of trips. Uh, he swung wide and more importantly than the trip, he did not get a good set up at all. Uh, the pace was slow he was, he was, he, he had a leg from behind, you know, he was coming back off those two weeks and, you know, he had that incident where he got cut. I don't think that really took anything out of him. If he wasn't fine, there's no way Gustavo Delgado and Ramiro Restrepo and Gustavo Delgado Jr. and the rest of his connections run him. They made every right call for that horse since the day that they bought him, uh, he ran his race, you, you know, very few win them all. It wasn't his day. It wasn't his setup, but he showed up and showed he's legitimate. He ran third and the three best horses finished one, two, three. Um, and they were probably in the right order for that particular day. Uh, I, 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 I don't think you can get around that. Now, some other significant takeaways. The racetrack. I think the racetrack was honest. I think that, and I don't know this, this is, this is my own uh, opinion, so to speak, but I think that uh, the track was a little, a little heavy and a little deeper uh, for the early races and the rail was not the place to be for the early races, uh, more so than later on the card. And I think that's probably because they were expecting rain. They probably or, or possibly didn't put as, as much water down on the track as they normally do. As the day went on and no rain came, they probably watered the track, got a little tighter, got a little faster, got a little more even, uh, and played a little kinder to front runners and, 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 and horses on the, on the lead. I wouldn't call it a bias, but I think it was a little kinder to the speed than it was earlier in the day. Uh, going into the first turn of the Preakness, the first thing I thought of when I saw how Johnny was riding was how Angel Cordero rode Bold Forbes in the Belmont Stakes. Bold Forbes wasn't really a mile and a half horse, and he won the Belmont Stakes. One of the reasons he was able to do that was Angel's masterful ride. And you could give a masterful ride on an only speed, on a favorite. National Treasure wasn't the favorite. Uh, on a long shot doesn't matter a masterful ride is a masterful ride Johnny gave a masterful ride and it reminded me of Angel's ride on Bold Forbes and I'll tell you why Angel kept Bold Forbes out in the middle of the track going into that first turn of the Belmont Stakes why and he said so publicly uh, over the course of the years uh, because A 
if you keep a horse out in the middle of the track, a speed horse, as opposed to running on the rail, they're less likely to get keyed up. You put them right on the rail, they're going to run harder, they're going to keyed up, get keyed up, uh, going to get more aggressive, going to get more into the bit, and tougher to slow down that pace. Johnny knows that. He learned from Angel, and he's a uh, masterful rider himself, Hall of Famer, right? He knew that. So he kept National Treasure off the rail. That helped the horse relax. He made the lead anyway, all week long, okay? Make no mistake, Bob Baffert and Johnny V played chicken with everybody. Oh, we're going to play the break. We're going to see how it goes. He don't break so good. He don't break good. I have no doubt in my mind that plan A, okay, was we're on the rail, blink is on, try and get out to the lead. I have no doubt about that. Um, and when he did pretty much into the first turn, and if not into the first turn, when you saw the 48 and change half, the race was over. Now, he kept the horse out. What else did he do when he kept the horse out in the middle of the track? He forced some other horses to be even wider than he was. Okay, so he's wide, but he's saving ground in comparison to the other horses. Masterful ride, okay? Uh, when Blazing Sevens made that early move, you saw no panic. He kept to his game. He let Irad ride him aggressively. He did not give an inch. Uh, but he went to the left hand at the right time when that horse put it and put, put a nose in front. National Treasure responded, got to the wire first. Phenomenal race, um, phenomenal statement, okay, uh, by Bob Baffert to come back, you, you know, from a two year ban from the Triple Crown races, show up with a horse who wasn't in the Derby, wasn't a favorite, uh. Was, was a generous five to two, three to one, in my my opinion, uh, and, and just show up the way he did and, 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 and get the money is really a, a statement to the kind of horseman and trainer that the guy is. Yeah, he's got his haters. Uh, I'm not one of them. It was a phenomenal training job and, and further cemented his his unparalleled success in these in these triple crown triple crown races and mind you okay say what you will all right under as much scrutiny and as much watchful eyes as a trainer can be under okay uh so let's just be real about that that's that that that's that that's a fact okay uh and still won the race um so salute to the winner, Mr. Baffert, the connections of National Treasure, Johnny getting his first Preakness, Chad Brown, unbelievable training job, uh, Johnny riding that track masterfully, Mage showing up off the Derby, uh, bringing his race, not getting the right setup, and not embarrassing himself at all, uh, and you know. Yeah, short field. Yeah, a lot of horses not from the Derby. You, you know, phenomenal, it, 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 exciting race. Turning for home to the wire. Uh, you want to see that. You want to see, you know, good, classy horses and top riders going at it. Um, uh, Irad rode his style, aggressive, lay all over the other horse. Reminded me of, of Zandon and Mo Donegal in the Remsen as two-year-olds. And I think it was Johnny and I read as well where, 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 where Mo Donegal was laying all over Zandon. Um, didn't work out in his favor this time. Uh, it did with Mo Donegal in the Remsen, I believe. But, uh, you know, that, th th those, those were the takeaways. Phenomenal race. The track, I think, did change. Um, you know, those guys, they show up on the big days. Uh, they make the right calls. And I'm going to put Gustavo Delgado right in there. You know, one of the things I said about Del Delgado in, in, in one of the earlier shows is that he's not a guy that's on the radar, okay? And people get him confused with Jorge Delgado. No, no, no disparagement to Jorge Delgado. I don't follow his career like I do Gustavo's. 
but I know this about Gustavo. For years, he's been entering horses in big races that are big, 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 big prices and wind up running really, really good second and third. And I, I, I said on one of the pre, pre-derby pre shows, eventually this guy's going to jump up and win one of these races at a big price. And sure enough, it was in the derby. Uh, and he's now a Kentucky Derby winner. Um, well-earned, well-deserved. So, uh, you know, would we like a bigger field? Yeah, uh, of course, we all we, we all like that. But to, 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 to take away from the race, I can't do it. I can't get on that bandwagon. I thought it was a very, very exciting race. And had I lost that photo, lost that, well, it wasn't really a photo. Had I lost that stretch battle, um, I wouldn't be saying any different. I still would be saying, hey, that was a heck of a race. I was just wrong. I got beat. Chad got me. And Chad very rarely gets me. Uh, I got Chad clocked pretty good. Uh, you know, I've been watching his career uh, since he started, um, since Moran Moran won the Breeders' Cup. Um, and I, I made the mistake of betting against her and leaving her out because she had run for Maiden 75, um, I think, broke her Maiden. And I'm just going off memory. I believe Moran was his first Breeders' Cup winner, and she ran for, for a tag for Maiden 75. Uh, at one point, and I let somehow that get into my head that how good could she be if Chad ran up for the day uh, and she win the Breeders' Cup. So anyway, that all said, uh, and if I'm wrong, like I said, I'm going off memory, and uh, you know that was a while, a while ago. That might have been like 2007 or eight or something like that. Uh, so great race, I loved it. Uh, it was marred by a, a, a horrible, a horrible, horrible, just gut-wrenching, sinking um, blow to all of us who love the game. Uh, not a harder blow to anybody, to anybody, uh, uh, any of us than it was to Bob Baffert and his connections and then Jimmy Barnes and the whole team. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll again get to that at the end of the show. Uh, Back in a minute with some uh, Belmont Stakes early thoughts. History remembers moments of extraordinary strength, skill, and determination. True greatness is forged by those who fulfill their destiny. Tracking trips with Pick 6 King, John Stetton. It's one of the best tools in horse racing for any level of player. It's your second set of eyes. Spotting troubled trips, betting angles, track trends. Horses to watch and favorites to fade. Ten figs, ticket structure, and more. At Tracking Trips, you're a friend with benefits. Not a member? You must hate winning money. Join Tracking Trips now. Visit PassTheWire.com and we'll see you in the winner circle. Remember, nobody does it better. Well, we don't even know for sure yet who's running into Belmont. So uh, these are real early thoughts. But let me start with this. Tappet Trice is going to be the hot horse in the Belmont Stakes. We all know that. I like them in the Derby. I've been high on him since I first saw him run. Uh, I still think he's a super, super nice horse. But every year, well, not every year, but a lot of years, there's always a horse that was closing in the Derby or didn't get the right trip in the Derby that everybody jumps all over in the Belmont and very rarely do they win. Now, sometimes they do, but uh, 
very rarely. Last year, I loved Mo Donegal in the Belmont Stakes. Made a very significant bet on Mo Donegal. If you watched our Belmont Stakes seminar, uh, I spent a good deal of time explaining how anybody who watched the Derby and bets any other horse out of the Derby other than Mo Donegal is crazy. They don't know how to watch a race. Uh, you know, there's nobody coming out of the Derby this year that I could say that about in the Belmont Stakes. I could say this. Two horses that people are going to assume are going to run very well are Tappet Trice and Angel of Empire. I'm not so sure of that yet. Uh, you know, different race, different pace, big Sandy, different track. And again, there's always those horses that, you, you know, Mo Donegal was an exception. There's always those horses that come out of the Derby that everybody says, ah, this is my Belmont horse, and they can't wait for that horse to run. Mistake. Wait for the PPs. Watch the... Belmont Stakes horses by the telegraph numbers and patterns right here on pa past the YTV. But, but, but wait for the PPs to come out and do your homework before you've got your quote Belmont horse because there's always those horses that disappoint. I remember I fell into that trap once with a horse named Strode's Creek from Charlie Whittingham uh, flying in the derby. I'm like, this horse, no way this horse can run okay can lose the belmont i don't care who's run happened this horse was flying he's gonna win easy belmont stakes written all over i think if we go turn on the tv now we may we may see him finishing the race uh doesn't work that way different race different pace and 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 one of the things i always say about closers a lot of the times when it's a longer distance race and people assume a closer is going to have that same punch, they don't. They're a little bit more tired. The speed holds when the horses are tired. The horses in front sometimes have an advantage. Different race, different day, different circumstances, different setup. Let's not make those assumptions. So let's go down quickly. And this is not our thoroughbred uh, pattern show, but we'll go down quickly. Angel of Empire, I got my concerns about uh nice horse surprised me in the derby even though he didn't win but mile and a half belmont i'm gonna wait and see his patterns and and see the past performances arabian lion i'll say right off the bat scary the way that horse ran on 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 preakness day in the sir barton could have been a contender in the preakness uh speed belmont dangerous um archangelo I don't know if he's going to run. Doesn't doesn't look look of this caliber to me. Forte, interesting. Will we see him back? I think we will. Reports are he's doing well. Uh, won't be a hungrier guy to win that race in in in, in the Belmont clubhouse uh, come Belmont Stakes Day than Mike Rapoli will there. Uh, I suspect Forte is going to come back and run a very, very, very wow. good race. Uh, hit show. Stay tuned. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I'm sold on him. Kings Bonds. I expect improvement out of him uh, if he shows up. Uh, you know, he was a little bit thrown to the wolves in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, not wild about the way his trip went and the way that race unfolded for him. Haven't given up on him yet at all. National treasure with the blinkers on. We saw what he could do in the Preakness. So he could be just blossoming at the right time. And we know that he can get the lead if Arabian Lion, a lion is not in there. And we also know he can sit second or third. Now that he's just focused and, and, and confident, he becomes extremely dangerous going forward. Prove worthy. I don't know, is this kind of horse? Raise Kane. Not for me. Red Route 1, deep closer, made an early move in the Preakness. I always fear, okay, as an angle, I always fear deep closers that make an early move, which I thought he made a terrible move in the Preakness. I thought he took away any chance the horse might have had to run well, uh, but makes that early move in the Preakness up the inside, backs up, What's going to probably happen in the Belmont if he runs is he's going to revert to his original regular running style, which is that one late run. 
when horses get taken out of their game and then revert back to their game, that's an angle that I've been successful with over the years. So we're going to watch that and pay attention to that. Reincarnate uh, disappointed me in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, but now we'll be, I assume, back with Bob Baffert if he shows up. Uh, scary. Sun Thunder is one that I thought was sitting on a big race. Are we going to see it in the Belmont? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, and Tappet Trice, who's probably, I, I would say, has a good chance to be a favorite in the Belmont Stakes. So if all the hype in the Kentucky Derby off, off, off everything, and, and like I said, as much as I like them, I've got significant reservations about those, quote, wise guy derby horses that everybody saw in the derby and wrote down their name for the, you know, being the, the, the winner of the Belmont Stakes. Not so sure that I buy into that just yet, but uh, we got plenty of time. Uh, we don't get paid more now for forming an opinion today, so we're not going to do that. We're going to do our thoroughbred thing again. Uh, if you don't watch it, you're crazy. Uh, visit thoroughbred. Uh, there's a link on the website to them. Uh, check out all their information, tutorials, and, 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 and whatnot. Familiarize yourself. It'll help when we do the show. Uh, and then if you don't want to and you just want to listen and, 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 and ride along with my interpretation of the patterns, that's fine too. Um, we'll come back and close out with a little talk about uh, something that we got to talk about and uh, change the tone of the uh, show for the, 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 the closing of it. So uh, just hang tight. You know, when they, when they ran the Chick Lang and Havana Meltdown came out of the gate bad, I suspected that the two horse bumped him when I saw the head on. I realized that there was a good chance he did. Uh, as the race unfolded, I thought Luis Saez did a very, very good job of recovering, of putting the horse in a winning position, um, wound up stalking uh, Tyler Gaffleon's horse and, and turning for home before the incident occurred. It looked to me like despite the gate trouble, he was going to win the race anyway. And then, you know, we all know what happened. He broke down in the left front um, and, and had to be euthanized. And, and it, it was a tragedy. And you know, there were two things that I always say about horse racing. It is not for the faint of heart. And it will bring you to the highest highs and lowest lows. Uh, and that's exactly what happened to uh, Bob Baffert and his team on, on Preakness Day. As hard as that hit all of us, okay, it hit nobody harder than Havana Meltdown, who broke down. Was euthanized, uh, and then it hit nobody harder than 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 Bob Baffert. Uh, you, you know, people say crocodile tears. I say BS. I don't buy that for a second. Uh, I think that gutted him, uh, and I know I know him, and 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 have touched base with him afterwards. Uh, he's gutted. Uh, he saddled national treasure. He had to. He's got other owners. He's got other responsibilities. He's got other horses. Uh, it wasn't an easy thing, okay? Uh, he's got to put a face on TV. You think it's easy to have cameras thrown in your face in situations like that and try and handle yourself. Uh, then you've never been in that position because it's not easy. Um, it was a horrible thing. Uh, it could have happened, and it does happen to any horse. Uh, there's nobody to blame for that, except in reality, 
all of us, every single one of us, we know that we ask a lot of these horses. We know the risks involved for horse and rider. We know that we all contribute to the game and partake in the game in one way or another, uh, every one of us. Uh, so I don't point fingers and point blame at anyone uh, of suffering a breakdown. Do I think for a second that Bob Baffert, after two years being away and being under the scrutiny that he's under, brought a sore or ill-prepared horse to run on the Preakness undercard? No, I don't believe that. Um, if you do, you're entitled to your opinion. I don't hate anybody because of their opinion. Uh, and I, I, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Uh, I don't believe that. And I don't think that anybody that knows him or knows how he runs his barn believes that. Uh, I think that people that believe that don't, don't know the guy. Uh, you know, the other thing I want to close with is, 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 is this. I have always been a proponent and a believer in what I would like to refer to and call drug-free racing. Uh, and such a thing actually exists. I don't know the answer to that. Um, horses are given legal therapeutic medications. Uh, they're given treatments that can be very helpful, okay? Uh, they don't get a choice. We put them in that position and we do that to most of us, okay? And I'm not talking about juicing or illegal stuff like Jason Navarro, Jason Service and Jorge Navarro were accused of and pled guilty of too. I'm talking about legal therapeutic medications and sometimes overages um, and things like that. But we, we do that, most of us, most of the horsemen and trainers and vets that do that, do that to try and help the horses run, compete, stay sound. Uh, are there some who push the envelope? Are there some who make mistakes? Are there some who uh, use things improperly? Sure there are. There's, there's, there's bad apples in, every, in, 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 in every, every money game that there is, okay? Especially big money games like ours. But, you know, we, we do this, we put these horses in this position and you know, drug-free racing, I would like to see a world where if a horse needed an injection, if a horse needed medication to train, to make a race, uh, that as opposed to doing that, we give the horse 30 days, 60 days rest, uh, and then bring him back. But you know what? I don't know that that's reality. I don't know that we could have thoroughbred racing in that, in that, fantasy land in my mind um and to those of you who think that years ago uh in the glory days of racing uh, which i like to call the 70s and 80s they weren't doing similar things um no it's not the truth it's 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 just not the truth um conquistador cielo was given an injection before the Belmont Stakes, after he won the Met Mile, uh, by Woody Stevens, who was probably one of the the, the most well known hay oats and water guys that there were, that there was back then. Um, Conquistador Cielo won the Met Mile. Five days later, won the Belmont Stakes. I don't believe he ran again till the Travers, when Runaway Groom, who under normal circumstances couldn't warm him up ran past him like he was standing still. Uh, and I don't think he ever run again. Uh, he was given an injection prior to the Belmont Stakes. Uh, my knowledge of the incident is limited, but I do know that Woody uh, kept it quiet because he believed that, that people knowing that a horse was being injected was a sign of weakness and, a, and, and, and 
and, 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 and a vulnerability and it affected a lot of things about that horse. And, uh, you, you, you know, I, I don't think he wanted, frankly, and I don't know this, but I don't think he wanted to answer any questions about it. So, um, it was kept hush hush, but it went on today. It's much more regulated. That was what four days rest from the injection today you got 14 day withdrawal times uh is that enough i don't know I'm, I'm, I'm not a scientist i'm not a veterinarian uh i'm not qualified to speak intelligently on 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 on, on these things uh but legal therapeutic medications to help horses are a part of this game uh, treating horses to keep them sound, keep them healthy, the same way athletes are treated. Uh, athletes have a choice, horses don't, I get that. But the same way that they're treated, our horses are treated and some of them are done with love and caring and, and, and with the horse's best interest. Um, we see NFL guys sitting in tubs of ice after games that if they didn't sit in that tub of ice and get injected and take medications. They couldn't play the next Sunday. They make that choice. Um, horses don't. We make that choice for them. So we have to make it right. We have to make it better if there's a way to do it. And we have to remain cognizant of that. And, and I think for me, the cold hard reality is that, you know, the glory days of racing that I experienced in the 70s and 80s were not drug free. Yes, Lasix was illegal in New York. Uh, you were considered a second stringer if you had to run on Lasix and go out of town. Uh, but there were other medications being used. There were other things being done. It might have even been worse than, than it is today because it was less regulated. There were less drugs. There probably weren't as good drugs. Um, or as beneficial drugs and, 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 and therapeutic medications than there are today. Again, I don't know this. This is a conversation for a vet, uh, not for me. I'm just opining, but also pointing out and recognizing uh, uh, the realities of thoroughbred racing and the, the, uh, uh, the realities of, of professional athletes and, and, and our racehorses are professional athletes that we have custodians, custodians of. And, you know, I think the glory days of racing might go back to the days when it was truly the sport of kings. Uh, days like when horses of man of war ran, okay? Uh, there were no drugs back then because they just didn't exist. Uh, you know, I don't know what went on then. I don't know how sound those horses were, but when I look at horses from that era and I look at the horses of today, even the good looking, most beautiful specimen of a horse from today, they don't look to me like those horses. Those horses look better. Man of War looks better. Uh, that's just my opinion. Um, but what happened to Havana Meltdown um, was no more Bob Baffert's fault than it was all of us who played a game. Uh, that's what I believe. I don't believe he brought an ill-prepared horse to run on a Preakness undercard. Uh, that horse cleared every vet check, uh, and there were several, before he was allowed to run. His veterinary records were all inspected, were known before he was allowed to run. Uh, they were operating, in my opinion, this year at the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness under the strictest of protocols and under an abundance of caution. Horse was allowed to run. Uh, Brad Cox's horse was not allowed to run in the Preakness despite his objections and lobbying for the horse to run. Forte was not allowed to run in the Derby despite Mike Rapoli and Todd Pledger lobbying to run the horse. Uh, Havana Meltdown was never even, as far as I know, discussed as not being able to run. He was fine and he broke down. It happens, it's sad, it's tragic, it's, 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 it's brutal, it guts us. I watched that occur and I felt, felt like, like, a, like a knife wound, man. I knew what it meant to Bob 
and his family and everybody getting back there after two years. And I, I just, I, 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 I feel for animals more as, as much as, as, as anybody out there. I'll, I'll, I'll put that out there. I feel for animals as much as anybody out there. And I do as much as I possibly can for animals uh, on a daily basis. I save and rescue many. And you want to know the worst part of that is I very rarely think of the ones that I save and rescue. The ones that haunt me are the ones that I couldn't save and couldn't rescue. And when that happened, it gutted me. And I know, and I believe it gutted them. Uh, can we ever eradicate breakdowns from the sport of thoroughbred horse racing? I don't think so. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I wish we could. If I could, I certainly would. Um, if I knew the answer, I certainly wouldn't keep it a secret. Uh, do we push them too hard, too soon, too early? I don't know. Probably. I would, I, I, I would lean in that direction. Um, do we have to find a way to make it more of a sport and more about the horse and less of a business. I think we have to do that. And that's a tough thing to do when you start working in the economics and the financial aspect of it. But I do think it needs to be done. Um, is Heise going to do it? Probably not. Uh, but I think it needs to be done. And I think we just need to, you know, end this remembering Havana meltdown and uh uh, this show, Pastor Wyatt TV, is dedicated to him and 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 his connections and 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 everyone in the industry who who feels it the right way. Uh, and I know there's a lot of people out there who do. Uh, so with that, uh, rest in peace, Father. Help us, because you know we need it. We ain't doing all that good on our own. Uh, Havana Meltdown hopefully is in a better place. Uh, I believe he is. And uh, we move on. We soldier on and we try and make it better, work together, understand, uh, and, 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 try, and try, try, try and find solutions um, to make it better for the horses. Uh, we owe it to them. Owe it to them all. Um, thanks everybody for watching Pastor Wyatt TV. Uh, I didn't know what I was going to say about Havana Meltdown. I said it, I just spoke from the heart at the end. Uh, and it is what it is. So, uh, we'll, 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 we'll move on to the next show, uh, which will probably be, um, later this week or maybe early next week. We'll see how things go, but thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you for the support, the support and, and, and acknowledgement and, and recognition of our Thoroughgraph shows was phenomenal. I think we were close to 25,000 people watched the Derby show, 12,000 or something watched, watched the other ones, 13,000. That's, that's phenomenal for a, you know, a, a small channel like like past the white tv we're not you know one of the big players out there but we do call it the way we see it we ain't for everybody i ain't for everybody that doesn't bother me in the in the least but uh we do have some loyal people and we're starting to get a little bit more popular and the support and the love i do appreciate uh and i notice all of you so uh thanks so subscribe like leave a comment even if you disagree with me, I'm open to I'm open to hearing it, talking about it. Um, the only thing I don't respond to is that people come with gibberish and nonsense and and, and non facts and just you know talk opinion as if it's fact and the opinion is not fact. There's a difference. Uh, when I'm giving my opinion, I say so. Most of you know that. When I'm stating a fact, I'll say that as well. Most of you, most of you know that. Uh, okay, thanks everybody uh ciao for now we will be back uh before you know it and they're off in the curlin florida derby after three quarters in 112 and one known agenda is now on to take over the lead it's 
known agenda for St. Elias Stable. Florida Derby winner, known agenda. Gentlemen, here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Nobody does it better.